Hey, pilots! Welcome to another exciting episode of War Robots Domination! A series of helpful gameplay tutorials designed to help highlight the tactics and strategies that I use to help tip the scales in my favorite game, War Robots. Each episode will feature a handful of battles along with helpful commentary that will provide insight as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. I'm your host, Gotcha Beacons, and I've been playing this awesome game for a few years now and I've learned a few tricks along the way that I'd love to share with y'all. You'll notice that although my hangar is fairly basic and at lower levels, I have been able to climb it up to Expert League, so I believe that you'll find my tactics will help you do more with less, which can be very helpful with today's economy in the game. I should also mention that this is my second account, so don't let my career profile stats fool you. This is actually my baby account, but it sends a great message to pilots who feel they need to chase the current meta in order to be competitive in battle, because you don't. Wise gameplay can usually overcome any fancy gimmick. A death button is a great example. It can still melt just about any build, and its heritage stems all the way back to near the beginning of the game. It's all about knowing when to use it and how to use it. So, without further ado, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's episodes while I walk you through my gameplay tactics and share with you my mindset in battle. I hope you find it entertaining, helpful, and fun to watch. I think you will. I'm going to call this battle Stop Loss, and I'll explain why as we go along here, guys. Enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song, November. I'll definitely put a link to their website on the uh, description of this uh, episode. So, um, this is Dead City. I've got my open map deck. You can uh, put an, a closed map or an open map uh, uh, on this one. And you know what I call an open map deck is basically, um, it's a map where you have some pretty good range opportunities to cover several uh, beacons at one time, you know, with, with a range bot, which I can do here. Um, you know, you can get away with a, a short range uh, a, a banger as well if you don't have both kinds. Uh, but um, I've got uh, my beautiful Zeus Fury in here. I call it Major Pain. I can watch this beacon here. I can uh, keep an eye, eye open on the center. I can keep an eye open to my um, our home spawn area. This guy didn't like me, so he came back in and said hi. Well, that's all right. So this is my tier. <clears throat> He's got a couple different kinds of weapons on him. He's got a Scourge on the right side. He's got a Halo, or maybe it's a Corona, because it's a medium. Our, um, corona on the, uh, on the left side. And then he's got a couple of sparks on top there. Now, when I extend the sparks on top, then he puts a physical shield up so he can kind of weather any um, energy uh, type of weaponry that's shooting at me. When I drop them, then he puts a, a, a boost of, uh, of, of healing around himself as well as people that are around me. So he's kind of a healing bot as well. So he's kind of cool. Um, so anyway, I'm going around and uh, just kind of monitoring the field. I'm calling this battle stop loss. You know, when you're on the battlefield, you're in with uh, five other people. They're either, you know, mates of yours or they're just randoms. Um, but you're always set with, with five other people and they're all you're all working together as a team, right? You know, part of your responsibility is to make sure that you cover their tail. You know, stop them from losing. If they're going into um, a cap a beacon, it does only take one to cap. But, you know, remember that they're going to be targeted if they're going toward a beacon. You know, you got reds that are either, you know, hiding from behind, hiding in the wings or whatever. So make sure that you're, you know, sticking around with them, you know, to help them after that. Now, if you got this one, he's a pretty tanky guy there on my side. He can cover his own, and we've got, and we're down two beacons to. Well, we're even right now, but I gotta make sure that you know we 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 also do this little loss prevention. We don't want to lose, so it's a matter of kind of going around when you can. Like I'm going back over here because he's starting to lose, and so that one's guy guy's gonna come on in now. I can't. I don't want to die though. You can't cap or kill when you're dead. We're up four beacons to one, so there's no reason to go in there in a certain depth if that guy is not gonna go after that beacon. You know, let it stick around for a little bit. Now, um. This is Diablo. He is my little Loki. Y'all know this guy. He comes out on every single battle. He's a he's a tight turner is what he is. Now, sometimes he's just going to... I mean, right now, we're, we're doing so good on beacons that uh, right now, I'm just kind of looking to see where I can be effective. Like, see right there? Here's a little stop-loss opportunity. Uh, we got an unclaimed beacon right there. I can go in there and make sure that one stays blue and look around and see where else I can go. And all I'm doing right now is looking for opportunities to kind of help uh, sway things back. Little stop losses, you know, when, when they're gonna go out and I'm gonna go ahead and get this beacon. See that guy's not taken down? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this one back. So it's a matter of kind of keeping an eye on the whole field at all times, 
seeing where you can kind of back up your mates. When one's getting ready to die, make sure that you're kind of filling in there to see, he's going to go in there. He may or may not make it, but if I go in there right behind him, see what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, oh, I didn't quite make it. So now I'm gonna hop into uh, my next one, which is my Falcon. Um, this is uh, my, tra he's got a traditional skill on him. So uh, people are going into the center there. I'm gonna go back in there and help to re-liberate that. It is liberated now. But then you got a couple of reds that are kind of marching on in there. Uh, my guy just uh, just kind of died. So I got to come in here and be a stop loss. Don't let them take this one. Uh, I got a tanky little traditional Falcon. He's hard to take out. So by standing here and just weathering the storm, um, it's okay. It's a stop loss. You know, it's keeping them from uh, getting that beacon for as long as possible. And all these little actions that I do throughout the battle, it's just a matter of keeping us at, you know, at an advantage and, and keeping the loss from happening. It's a stop loss. So make sure that when you're on the battlefield, you're always looking around and seeing what's happening. Be, you know, be very situationally aware of what's going on in the battlefield, where your mates are at, where their reds are at, what beacons are blue, what beacons need to be capped, what beacons have opportunities for them. When you have a mate that's getting ready to die, make sure you go in there and help them. And if you see your name, thanks for the game. Peace out. I'm going to call this battle, Any 3 will do. And I'll explain why as we go along here. Enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song, Theta. It's a great sound, and I'll put a link to their uh, Spotify website on uh, the description of this uh, episode. So, um... I use an open map deck on uh, Valley. Sometimes I'll use a closed map deck. I can usually actually use both. Um, so I normally take a major pain. He's my beautiful Zeus Fury up to that little tower, uh, but there was already another Zeus Fury up there. Well, then he left. Well, that is a great sweet spot for the Zeus Fury. So I was giving him a uh, free passage there and uh, he just left it. I don't know what happened to him. So I uh, took off and, uh, and but now I'm back. So I'll go here and ride this, ride this horse out. <laughs> and see how I, can, how I can do. No, I'm always got my eye on the beacon bar. I don't get too panicky at the beginning of a battle because see, we were down to uh, one beacon to there too. And now all of a sudden we're up three beacons to there too. So we're okay. Um, but I am watching this always to see the beacon count. Um, now, as I've uh, said in many battle uh, episodes and uh, you know my concept for domination, uh, you, what you want to try to do is get a, I call it three and hold. Get three beacons and hold them if you can. And hold them as long as you can. And as long as you're maintaining a, a three to two beacon advantage, you're gonna do okay. Um, my uh, Zeus Fury was getting ready to be taken out and I saw an opportunity. If you can get a four capper, that's great. But if nothing else, try to get a three and hold. Now, any three will do. Some maps it's easy to get three and just hold the same three, like on Yamato, where it's a center beacon and you gotta hold it. Or, you know, like Carrier or something like that. Um, but maps like uh, this one and Rome and Moon, um, they're a little, and Power Plant is another tricky one to kind of always hold the three. Um, but uh, in, in the same three, but because they're so open, there's pathways around it. But as you can see, my team is doing a really good job of kind of staying on top of it. But then the Reds come right on back. Well, I put in little uh, Loki, my, I call him Diablo. <laughs> He's my little Loki. And uh, he does a great job for me when it comes to just maintaining the beacon. And all I'm trying to do is, you know, keep a three, uh, at least a three beacon advantage. But you know what, any three will do. It doesn't have to be the center one. Sometimes it can be their home spawn area. Cause sometimes you'll see them, they'll take off and they'll leave that unattended. Well, they did, I came over here. Now what I'm doing right now, I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice um, Diablo and get two to three uh, of the reds up in this area. Cause by doing that, it takes them out of a position on the battlefield. Now, this is a guy you don't see very much. He's my traditionalist Falcon. I'm putting him in now because we have quite an advantage here. And now it's just a matter of getting a, a three uh, back cause they, they're back up, they're up three on us. So I gotta get this center one back. And he can stand here for a pretty long time because he's got that traditionalist um, skill on him, so it makes him very durable. Now this guy's this this guy's gonna get within range. I got two. I got two of these guys on me. I'll go ahead and give it up. Um, and he finally got taken out anyhow. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my little um, tier. 
Now, tears are pretty tough, but I, 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 they did a really smart thing. They took their Titan right out up into our spawn area, making it really tough. You know, any three will do though, so we gotta get some threes back. So um, we got, now we're at three to two, and that looks good. Um, they had a nice push back, and they're still got this Titan coming back in here. Guys, Titans are for real. Do not turn your back on a Titan. They are absolutely changing the, the tide of the game. Well, now they're up three to R2, and you gotta have three. So I'm gonna go ahead and waltz back over here to their home spawn area. As you can see, the head count, they're down to three, um, they're down to three mates. All I need to do is grab this one, and this will be the, the, the nail in the coffin. And I uh, got a little kill out of that one too. But that one, that one will take us to the nice green banner at the end, guys. You know, for sure, uh, without a doubt, uh, you want to try to get a three and hold or a three beacon advantage at all times. And if you feel, if you see you've slipped down to two or less, you want to always fight to make sure you have that beacon advantage first before you go into combat. Now, sometimes it means taking out a red that's holding a beacon um, if you can. But if you can't, don't die needlessly make sure you're going after an unguarded beacon because oftentimes you can uh, spot those right pilots on both sides if they see your name thanks for the game peace out and then we call this battle rush to the end <laughs> you're definitely gonna understand why if you stick around to the very end and i sure hope you do enjoy my friends in the background and status as they play their awesome song war perfect for this battle okay guys this is uh this episode's beacon rush battle and it is amazing! Do not go nowhere! That was Frick, he's my de death button raven. I use his double jump to get right in the center. I wanna get that neutral beacon. Now as you know how I play beacon rush, I say you put in your fastest, most durable, high DPS spots, you go as crazy as you can, get very aggressive, and you're always pushing toward their back spawn area, trying to grab the beacons that are uh, neutral and get closer and closer, slowly building a containment center around their home spawn area. And that's the best way to approach this. <laughs> but sometimes they read the manual. <laughs> and if you both got two teams that both know how to play, Oh my gosh, it could be amazing. So that was, uh, that was there's this uh, Blitz, uh, my, I call him Whizbang. He's my little Blitz, he's pretty amazing. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, that's Diablo. This is my little Loki. Um, I'm sorry, this game has got me speechless. It is just an amazing one, don't go nowhere. So this is Diablo, he's my little Loki. He's got um, Roadhog and Adamant Roadhog. When we're down a beacon, he's a little faster. But you know, a low hanging weapon like this guy here, like the, um, the, uh, um, the little Strider, he can get me. Um, and uh, so can a, um, uh, a Phantom. And I'm gonna go toe to toe with a Phantom here. Now, uh, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to get my team. I see them all over there, Groove. Hey guys, anyone wanna walk over here? Hey, all of you. Hey, any one of you. Can you come on over here? We might be able to take this guy out. I can only keep him busy for so long. I couldn't keep him going for any longer. He had some back. He got some backup. So I gotta go over here and see if I can turn this one um, liberated and turn it blue if I can. Guys, it is all about staying ahead of the beacons. Now they both came over here. I don't know where my mates are. They're all having a big tea party over there or something. Come on, guys, get in the game. You gotta spread out, divide and conquer. So we're just gonna keep going out of here. This is a constant rush. They are coming at us. We are coming at them. I'm just dancing around like a fool right now, but I'm trying to get a bunch of them kind of occupied. See now, good. Good. Now they're getting their little tea party together. If there's two or three of them or four of them all here, that means the rest of my team is able to move around and maybe get some positional advantage. Oh, but one of them came back here. I can't let him do that. So I'm gonna hop in. This is Whizbang. He's my little uh, blitz. Um, he's got Coronas and one um, Shredder. Um, I shouldn't be shooting him at a shield. I should be going off to the side. Um, and now he's got a buddy that's shooting at me too. But I got some friends that are coming in here. We got to finally take it out. So I'm going to zip on over there. I don't need to go to the, after that one. I got to go into the uh, center here. See if we can help take this guy down. Um, we've got a Titan on my team that's taking him on. Um, now I'm looking at where the reds are, where the red beacons are, and where I might be able to go and do some damage. Maybe there, but that's a little tough. That's a little heat over there. So maybe I can go to the back. Maybe I can get their back beacon. So I'm going to head on back there. We're down three beacons of there too. It'd be nice to open up this beacon back here. It'd be a portal. I did not. I did not shoot at that. Um, 
Ao Ming for a reason. I'm not afraid of him. I don't want to bring his attention to me. I need to grab a beacon. Guys, grabbing beacons is more important than uh, getting some damage. So I gotta hop in here. I saw my guy was tussling with this guy. Got him out of there. I'm gonna try to see if I can take this guy out before he liberates, but not fast enough. He got it. So now I gotta figure out what to do with uh, this. Is a buzzkill. He buzzes, then he kills you. He's my little spark scorch mender. I was gonna try to go over there and, and mend my um, my Titan, but um, it didn't work. And I don't think mending on Titans works yet, anyhow. Um, this guy, I, I got locked on by a leech, but I'm shooting at something else. Got a little Titan Slayer there. I'm gonna see if I can. Oh, I can't. I got a mate that's gonna. Or I got a. a, a a, a falcon right there. I'm not gonna be able to take him on. So rather than go and beat him up, I have to go to a, go basically to an uncontested beacon, and I back myself into a wall. No, there you go. <laughs> All right, you gotta be able to walk backwards around this map really good. If you don't, then you're gonna get lot. You're gonna get pegged. If I'd gotten there just a little bit sooner, I might have had a better shot at that one. So there goes Whizbang. So now I'm hopping into my Titan. Look at that beacon bar. Look at that beacon count. Look at that timer. Woo! All right. I don't even get to my my uh, Titan oftentimes. I don't mech out that often. But you know, with Beacon Rush, you have to play a lot more uh, aggressive. And look at this, this is still going on, man. What an amazing battle! We got about uh, 40 seconds left. Um, I should have followed him right on in. I wasn't even thinking that um, a red could hop in there. That was my bad. I was going off thinking, well, he already got that beacon. But what I should have done is I should have come in and helped him get that beacon because obviously what happened was he ran into some resistance because they, they, they spawned in right on top of him. But we got this one and we got seven seconds, five seconds, three seconds in. Woo! I don't know. And look at this. I'm at the bottom with the whole. I broke a million, and yet I'm at the bottom. And if you start looking at these uh, these uh, league amounts uh, here, league ranks in here, a uh, bunch of experts, a couple of masters, and yet you got nothing but millies across the board. What an amazing battle! Woo! That was a rush to the end. Hey, if you see your name, thanks for the game. That one was amazing. Peace out, guys. Well, friends, that just about wraps it up for another episode. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw and were able to take something you learned and use it in battle. I add content to my YouTube channel almost daily, so please stop by when you're able and check out the fresh new material. Or just click on an old episode and maybe catch another tip that'll help you up your game. If you like what you see, please tap on the red subscription button and then tap the bell to be notified when new episodes are released. It would also be helpful if you could make a comment about the video. Whether it's an example of how the episode helped you, or maybe additional advice to help elaborate on the tactics I shared, or even constructive comments that'll help clarify something I might have missed. It's all good and greatly appreciated. Finally, this game is full of challenges and can create frustration for some who are simply trying to have fun with this awesome game. My goal is to provide you all with helpful information and help reduce the frustration and increase the fun. So, if you feel these videos are helping you, please share them with a friend, someone who you think might benefit from them. Well, that's about it for today, guys. As always, keep them blue out there and I hope to see you on the battlefield. Make sure you're having fun though, because if you're not, you're doing it wrong. I love you all for your support. Play well. Peace out.